The story is called Mrs. Cats and Tush. It was written by and illustrated by Patricia Polacco. Patricia Polacco has roots in both California and Michigan, is known all over the United States and the world, and has produced over 100 books for young readers. This photo of her appears in a small article on the website Michigan Jewish History. Um, you can find the link there to read more about um, her and this book, Mrs. Katz and Tush. Larnell didn't know Mrs. Katz very well, but almost every other day, his mother stopped in to see her after work. Since her husband died, she's so alone, his mother had told him. Mrs. Katz held tight to his mother's hand the day they looked at an old photo album. That's my husband, Myron, said Mrs. Katz. He came from Poland, like me, a long time ago. We had such a life, such a life. Then her voice broke. We had no children, and I'll be all alone for Hanukkah and Passover. Then... She cried. The next day, Larnell stopped in to see her himself. I've been thinking, he said. A, a cat had some kittens in the basement of our building. We have found someone to take them all except this one. She's the runt. Nobody wants her because she's so ugly. She doesn't even have a tail. Ugly, you say, Mrs. Cat said. My Myron was ugly, too, when he was little, but he grew up to be such a person. Mrs. Katz looked at the little kitten. Scrawny little boobla, so small, no tail, she said as she examined the kitten closely. I don't know, she said doubtfully. Then she saw the look on Larnell's face. Larnell, I'll take her, she announced, but... Only if you'll come and help me with her. I've never had a cat before. Larnell promised. A good Yiddish name I'll give her, said Mrs. Katz. Let's see. She has no tail. All you see is her tush. That's it. We'll call her Tush. Little Tush grew healthy and strong. Mrs. Katz cooked for her, brushed her, knitted toys for her, and even read to her. Such a person, she'd say, as she watched Tush play. <laughs> Mrs. Katz was in love. Larnell kept his promise. He visited Mrs. Katz and Tush every day after school. There was always a fresh-baked kugel and a tall glass of milk waiting for him. But as much as he grew to love Tush, he also loved to listen to Mrs. Katz talk about the old country and the way times used to be. I come from Warsaw. That's in Poland, you know. I came here to work sewing dresses in the garment district for my cousin, Moisha. I didn't speak one word of English. Then how did you talk to people? asked Larnell. I didn't, she answered. A lot. I, I cried in those days until I met Myron. He asked me to marry him after he tasted my kugel. <laughs> I believe that, Larnell said as he ate some. Myron and I used to vacation in the Catskills, a borscht resort, you know, a place for Jews to stay. You mean Jews couldn't stay anywhere they wanted to? Larnell asked. Mrs. Katz didn't answer. Instead, she went to a trunk and pulled out some old clothes. My grandma told me about places she couldn't stay either, Larnell said softly. Larnell, your people and mine are alike, you know. Trouble we've seen. Happiness, too. Great strength we've had. You and I are alike, so much alike. 
Now, where was I? Oh, yes, the Catskills. We used to dress every Sunday and have a costume ball, said Mrs. Katz. Then she put a record on, the record player. It was old and scratched. Hmm, you hear that, Larnell? She said. That is where we used to dance to. That's it, that music. It's a dance from my homeland. Here, I'll show you. They whirled around the room and laughed and giggled. As the weeks passed, Larnell spent more and more time with Mrs. Katz. Since you are almost family to me, Larnell, she said one day, I want you should come with me to say Kaddish for my Myron. I know you're not Jewish, but Myron would have liked you. You're such a person, Larnell. At the cemetery, she read from her book. Then she asked Larnell to put a small rock on top of Mr. Katz's headstone. We do this to remember, she said softly. Shalom, my Myron, she murmured and wiped tears from her face. On the way home, she announced, Kugel, such a kugel I begged for you today, Larnell. Hurry, Tush will be worried for us, she said as they walked. When they got home, they called and called for Tush, but she didn't come. They looked everywhere for her. Suddenly, Mrs. Katz gasped. The window to the fire escape was open. Oh, no, she said. I forgot to shut the window before I left. Poor Bubala. She has never been outside. We'll find her, Larnell tried to reassure her. She has been acting strange lately, Mrs. Katz said through her tears. She has been trying to get out, but I was afraid that she would get hit by a car. I'll find her, Mrs. Katz, Larnell said. I, I won't let you down. It was getting dark. First, Mrs. Katz and Larnell looked around their building. Then they went everywhere in the neighborhood. They left notes on doors, telephone poles, and fences. They asked everyone who lived nearby, but no one had seen Little Tush. That night it stormed. There was rain, awful, awful rain. Mrs. Katz hardly slept as she thought about her little Catilla. Oh, she's such a person, such a person, she whispered. Larnell worried most of the night, too. What will Mrs. Katz do, he thought. Please, God, bring that little cat back to her, he said softly into his pillow. A loud knock on the front door awoke Mrs. Katz. It was Larnell's father and two neighbors, is this yours? They asked. My boobla, my little catala, Mrs. Katz exclaimed. We found her in the back alley, soaking wet and hungry, Mr. Moore said. Thank you, thank you, Mrs. Katz said, as she took Tush in her arms. After a while, Tush no longer had the least desire to go outside again. But she slept a lot even when Larnell came over to play with her. It was at my Aunt Havila's Passover Seder that I met Myron. Did you know that? Mrs. Katz asked as she looked at Larnell. Oh, what good times they were, with lots and lots of family. Now it's just me, she said softly. Could I have Passover dinner with you? asked Larnell. Oh, I thought you would never ask, she exclaimed as she hugged him close. Such a Seder I'll prepare for you. Passover is a time for good food, Mrs. Katz shouted as they edged their way through the crowd in the deli. Like your people, my people were slaves too. They lived in a country where they did not want to be. 
They wanted freedom so much that they prayed to God to help them. So he sent an angel, an angel that brought death and sadness to the houses of our captors. But the angel did not visit the houses of my people. How did the angel know where the Jews lived? Larnell asked. They marked their doors. Then the angel passed over. Passed over, Larnell. That's why we call this time of celebration Passover. So, Larnell, we have a big feast to prepare to celebrate, but we also remember those who had to suffer so we could be free, Mrs. Katz said. Part of the dinner is sad, and part of it is happy. As Larnell helped get out the linens in China, Mrs. Katz said, You see the stablecloth? This was our wedding chupa, our canopy. For all these years, we have used it for holy days and celebrations. How come you have so many dishes? Larnell asked. Because some Jews don't eat dairy and meat off the same dishes, she answered. When they sat down to Seder together, Mrs. Katz lit two candles and waved her hands over them. She read from her book, said prayers, then smiled and said, Let the feast begin. They drank red wine and water. They ate bitter herbs, lamb and chicken. They also had gefilte fish and spicy chopped apples with potato pancakes, latkes. This bread looks like a soda cracker, Larnell exclaimed. We call it matzo, dear. We eat it at Passover. It's flat because there's no yeast in it, so it doesn't rise. Larnell, I have hidden one piece of matzo here in the apartment. If you can find it, I have a surprise for you. The surprise was a hand-knit sweater that she had made just for him. The next day, Mrs. Katz yelled out her back window to Larnell's apartment. Come quick already, come, something wonderful. Larnell and his mom and dad rushed to her door. The angel of death passed over, but the angel of life didn't. Mazel tov tush, four babies. <laughs> At last I am a booby. As the years passed, Mrs. Katz, Tush, and her descendants became part of Larnell's family. There were graduations, weddings, new babies, and finally, a Kaddish. Larnell stood in front of the headstone. He read from her book. He placed a small rock on top of her tomb headstone. Then he, his wife, and their children read the inscription together. Mrs. Katz, our booby, such a person. The end. A Dragonfly book, an Oprah Winfrey recommended kids book, a reading rainbow book. This has been Mrs. Katz and Tush, illustrated and written by Patricia Polacco.